I'm stoked to tell you about what's potentially my new favorite website builder that's gonna replace the existing ones I'm using such as Duda and Webflow. The three reasons why I think this website builder is destined to be the best out there. And I'm gonna give you like a little demo of it just to show you where it's at right now is pretty bare. It's in beta, which means it can build a website and it can do it pretty well, but it's missing a lot of features essentially. The foundation of this website platform and this website builder is amazing. Seriously, my hopes are so high for it. There's problems with Duda, there's problems with Webflow, and really there's problems with every website builder, but there's specific things that just bother me so much about some of these website builders that I think this new one called Web Studio is going to fix. So this is Web Studio, and if you've worked in Webflow, you're gonna say, wow, that looks a lot like Webflow. I mean, from the colors, this is Web Studio, this is Webflow, to the style panel on the right, like, it's pretty much a copycat Webflow. So you might go like, well, what's the difference? Why would I jump onto this new platform instead of Webflow that's been around for a really long time that can do a lot of kick-ass stuff? Well, Here's why. Three reasons, and there's a lot more, but here are my three favorite things about Web Studio and why I believe it's gonna be the best website platform out there. Number one, it is open source. If you've never been a part of open source, it's amazing for a lot of reasons. One, open source basically means that the code is available to anybody. So here's the code that makes up the entire website platform, entire Web Studio, and you can download it. You can go install it on your own server for free, but what you can also do if you're a developer is modify the code and fix stuff and add stuff and then send that code to Web Studio and ask them to make it officially a part of the platform. It's called a pull request. So I'm able to download this code, tweak a little bit and say, hey, take this and put it in your platform. And by doing this, it allows the platform to improve a lot faster. But by being open source, we're not dependent on say Webflow or Duda to implement a feature. I'm, I'm sitting on Webflow voting some of these features up that have been here for like five, six, seven years. They just aren't getting implemented and there's nothing I can do about it. But when it's open source, there's something that could be done about it. Whether you're a developer, you wanna hire somebody or there's just likely somebody else out out there that has the exact same need as you and that's a developer and that's willing to put in the time to make it work open source is huge i used to work in drupal and getting away from that has its benefits sometimes but i really want to find an open source platform that meets all of my needs okay the second reason why i think web studio is destined to be the best website platform out there is because the way it handles css classes so if you've worked in webflow you definitely know what i'm talking about so i'll give you a little demo here let's say we add a heading in this heading, we're going to add our various styles. So we're going to say, or our classes, we want this to be green and we want it to be all caps and we want it to be centered. And let's add some margin large on the bottom. Okay, now we have all these classes and classes are an awesome part of the website builder. It allows you to like reuse different components and create pixel perfect websites. But here's the problem. Let's say I decide, no, actually I want this to black instead of green. Well, I go over here and text color green. I want to change this. Well, I can rename duplicate, but I can't remove it. But then when I click in here, I can rename it, but this just renames it. And I can't change it without having to get rid of everything. So now I have to remember, okay, all caps, center, margin bottom, margin large, get rid of everything and then go, okay, text color black. Now what was it? You know, text style, all caps. I'm already forgetting some of them of center and you have to do this for everyone. So it's a pain. This is a maintenance nightmare. The way around this is to just not do that and to nest everything. And with the handy shortcut, I'm able to wrap these in divs. So I could say, okay, the parent is what's going to hold the text color green and Oh, I changed the name to ASDF. And then the child is going to have, you know, text center. And what happens though, is then I ultimately have usually a bunch of divs where, okay, one of them handles the, the alignment, the color, the background, the padding. And it's just a pain to like work within all of these different wrappers. So what does Web Studio do to fix this maintenance nightmare? They have a unique implementation called style sources, which are made up of tokens. So let's go to the editor and I'll show you this a little bit more. If you guys want to pause to see what the components they have are, you know, go for that. Let's just add a heading for now and let's do the same thing. So let's say we want that color green to do center and I have some stuff from oh, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are the same. So I just did alt and clicked on color and it reset it. And you know, we can add like whatever else, but let's say we want to change the color green. Well, now we can do this in several ways. One, we can remove this class that's up higher up, which is amazing, that like a huge improvement. And then we can go down here and add color black. We could also rearrange stuff. So if there's like priority between different tokens, 
you know, the later ones will take into effect. So that is absolutely massive. I don't know why Webflow doesn't do this. I think they're just in too deep with the way it's built that would require like too much changes, but I don't know, maybe they will do it. All right, the other huge thing while staying in my second favorite point, we're still on number two, is this idea of local tokens. I don't know if local is technically a token, but whatever. So I can click between these to modify them and say, I wanna do local. On local, I'm gonna say, well, on this one, I wanna do a little override and the color we're gonna make red. We're gonna see here that coincidentally, this is also red, but this just means that the value is overridden somewhere else and we can take local and actually move it to the end because the ones at the end get priority and now we can have these various styles attached to this local element that every single element component is going to have so you can't get rid of local you can use it or you, you don't need to use it you can also convert it into a token so if i really like what i've done here i can convert this to a token and say this is going to be like my red header and now i can reuse red header on other elements so the ability to remove reorder and also use use a local style source is absolutely huge. I often get into these scenarios if I just undo a lot of this where I have all this stuff and for whatever reason, I just need to make like one little change to this element. Well, then I kind of just create my own local class where I'll be like, okay, like heading local, like home or whatever. And now any changes I make to this guy are gonna be applied to this class. But in order to use this class, I have to use every single one above it because I can't use this class by itself. So it's kind of dumb and it's just a maintenance nightmare. So Web Studio fixes all of that. My third favorite thing about Web Studio is the fact that it uses is Cloudflare. So if you use Webflow and many of these other SaaS platforms or, or platforms as a service, whatever they're called, they often don't work with Cloudflare. And I have, I have two theories about that. One, these platforms typically charge by how much of their servers you're using. So like if you get 10,000 page views a month or 50,000, you know, that's going to make their bill go up. So they want to charge you more and pass the cost down to you. But when you use Cloudflare, a lot of your resources are cached in Cloudflare, meaning that when somebody goes to your your website, Cloudflare is going to be responsible for giving it to them instead of Webflow. So Webflow is going to get less money because Cloudflare is doing more for you. And I also think there might be some technical limitations with like how they do SSL and some other stuff that makes them not want to use Cloudflare. However, I figured out a way to use Webflow with Cloudflare. I have another video on that if you want to check that out. But Web Studio, if we go to their marketing page, this is also built with Web Studio, by the way, they have near zero latency. So they deploy the website to Cloudflare. So it's not that Cloudflare is going to sit on top of the website where Cloudflare and then there's going to be like an AWS server. Cloudflare is the server and that's what Cloudflare Workers is. And that is amazing. I mean, not only can you use Cloudflare with Web Studio, but the fact that Web Studio is deployed to Cloudflare is absolutely massive. You get the performance, the reliability, and the security from Cloudflare. That's huge. That is really huge. And for those three reasons, I think Web Studio is destined to be the best website builder out there. But it's hard to call anything the best because it depends on your use cases. It's not going to be the best for managing a store or something like that because there's no talks about e-commerce getting built in. But I think for having a great website builder, this is going to be my new favorite. But but we're missing a lot of stuff. So on their website, they say coming this year, CMSs and databases, that's a must have for me. Every website I build has the CMS and uh, interactions and animations are missing right now. So there's really no transform or anything like that on the, the right, like you would have in Webflow, how you have your transitions and transforms as well as your interactions. None of that is in Web Studio, but what they do have, and I think this is really cool and I just wanna give you a little demo of it, is they have slots. So if we add a slot and then we don't have the keyboard shortcut to open up the components yet, I keep hitting A because it feels like I'm in Webflow, but that's not there. Let's add a box to it. And then in the box, let's add a header and let's give the box some padding. Oh, also like on the right, you've got your spacing. Very much feels like Webflow. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. And some of the keyboard shortcuts are the same. So if I hold shift, it'll let me change all the padding at once. And if I do alt, it'll let me do just like the opposite side. So let's do that and then add a background of whatever color. Oh, that's border. I can do alt to clear that. And then let's do a background. And then what's really cool is this slot, let's give it a name and just say demo slot. I can duplicate this or I can copy it and add it to another page and paste it. And now any changes I make to this are going to sync with the other slots. So let's change this to like blue or green. And then if I go back to my home, we're gonna see the same changes. 
So pretty cool, all the slots sync. This is how you would build a header, a footer, maybe a CTA or any other components you want to reuse on your website. I know you're probably wondering, well, how much does this cost? It's insanely cheap and by cheap, I mean free. So you get 10,000 page views per month, which most websites are gonna be under that. And then if you need more than that or more asset storage, it's only 20 bucks a month for up to 500,000 page views a month. So this is really cheap. And I guess this is coming soon, so it's not even, like this is very early in the stages of Web Studio, but I am very hopeful for this. I think there's a lot of stuff that it needs to implement before I make it my primary website builder. But once it hits a certain threshold, this is gonna probably be my go-to. And fingers crossed in the near future, we're gonna be seeing a lot more Web Studio content on this channel because it will become my tool of choice. I know there's probably a lot of you out there that go, oh, but you've talked so much about Dudo and each platform has its strengths and weaknesses. And I am not just, you know, blindly faithful to any certain platform. If there's a new one that comes out that I find superior, I would love to learn it and then jump on there. So I've done this for over 10 years and I've used different platforms throughout all 10 years. It's a great skill set to have but it also allows me to create the best websites at the most efficient pace. And that's kind of what I'm after. But the benefit is once you learn one platform, it's a lot easier to learn the second. On that note, I'm really hopeful of the prospects of Web Studio becoming my new favorite platform, but time will tell. Peace guys.